This video focuses on RNA, the structure and the function of those molecules. Let's start by investigating the three major differences between DNA and RNA. First, notice that DNA is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. DNA uses deoxyribose, the sugar. RNA just uses ribose, the sugar. DNA uses a nitrogen-based thymine, but in RNA, there is no thymine. Instead, there is uracil. Well, the question is, what does RNA do? Well, DNA stores information. DNA stays in the nucleus. So how does that information get out of the nucleus and into the cell? Well, that's the job of RNA. RNA's job is to make protein. So it's going to take that DNA code out of the nucleus to a ribosome and then assemble the amino acids at that ribosome site. You'll notice that messenger RNA takes that message out into the cytoplasm. Ribosomal RNA is in fact ribosomes where proteins are made. And transfer RNA is going to be the molecule that builds the amino acids. Here's another picture of it. You'll notice the messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA. That code from the DNA, the A's and T's and C's and G's, that pair, pair differently with RNA. C's still pair with G's, but this time A's are going to pair with U's because RNA has a uracil. That amino acid code is only three nitrogen bases long, A, 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 or A, C, G, or G, G, U, something like that. This is a diagram that's kind of showing exactly how that process works. Notice that the DNA has to unwind, and then the RNA is going to copy half one side of that DNA. Then that RNA is going to leave the nucleus, go to the ribosome. The ribosome is going to hold that RNA while transfer RNA matches the three codes in the codon with the three complementary nitrogen bases that are part of the transfer RNA. So uh, how do we know which amino acid comes next? Well, it depends. What are the next three letters in the code? And that code will form that protein. Depending on that code, that will determine the protein. The protein then determines your traits. Straight hair, curly hair, dark skin, light skin. Uh, do you have a dimples when you smile, widow's peak? All those uh, features about you are determined from that code and the amino acid sequence that's built from that code. If we know the code, we have figured out a way to determine what the amino acid is. Like we can know what the next amino acid is. So if the code is GGA, then we can use a diagram like this. And the first letter, the first G, that's going to be the center of that wheel. The next letter is the next ring. And then the third letter is the outside ring. So I start at the middle, G, I go to the next layer, G, I go to the outside ring, U, and I see the amino acid glycine. So uh, what if it were A, C, G? So I start in the middle, A, then the second ring, C, outside ring, G, and I see it's theranine. You'll notice that along the edge, there's 20 amino acids, and then there are some strange things. For example, UAA leads me to a stop. So that is a stop codon. That signals the end of the protein, like a period would signal the end of a sentence. Well, if there's a stop codon, there must be a start codon. And there is. AUG, methanolamine, is a start codon. So that's like a capital letter in the sentence. Sometimes you're not looking at a wheel. Instead, you're looking at a chart. So this side over here is the first letter. Let's say we're looking up a C-U-G. So C on the, the uh, side, we move over until it intersects with U, C-U, and then we scroll down until we get to G, C-U-G, leucine. And that's going to be the amino acid. How is ATP like DNA or RNA? 
remember that ATP is a nucleic acid, just like DNA or RNA. How are they similar? Well, they both have phosphates. They both have sugar. Uh, ATP uses the ribosugar, just like RNA. And they both have a nitrogen base, adenine for ATP. Now, DNA and RNA, it could have A or C or T or G. RNA could have A or G or C or U. But they have that base. The other difference is that ATP has three phosphates, not just the one. It says three phosphates that we're concerned about because that last phosphate can be broken off. That chemical bond can be broken and we can use it for energy. You get energy from the food you eat. That sugar is broken down by your body and converted into ATP. And then we use ATP. So think of it kind of like an arcade. Every time you eat a molecule of sugar, that's glucose. That's like $10, but we can't use a $10 bill at arcade. We need to convert it into quarters. That's ATP, and we spend those quarters in order to do our life processes. But ATP is also kind of like a battery. We break off that uh, chemical bond from that third phosphate. It breaks off, releases all kinds of energy, but then we use that glucose to reattach. So we don't throw the ATP molecule away when we're done with it. We just recharge it and recycle it and then reuse it. So whenever we're tired, it just means there's low levels of ATP. They've all been broken off and converted to ADP, adenosine diphosphate. So instead of tri, three, thi, two. But we eat food, that sugar can be used to recharge it, and then we can have that energy again. So I hope that helps understand a little bit about this last uh, nucleic acid, RNA, and ATP.